Hi, Jarvis Sunday School family. It is Brooke Sutton, and I'm glad to see you all. It's been a while since I've taught a lesson, and I am excited to be able to share today's lesson with you all. I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's healthy, and we are celebrating our first Sunday in Lent today, so I hope everyone is enjoying their Lent box that Danielle and the children's ministry leaders help put together. Those have been very, very special. Well, today I need you to get a few things ready for our lesson. Um, and I'll give you a minute to go pause the video. And if you will go get a pencil and a, two blank pieces of paper, these are going to be for some activities that we're going to do throughout the lesson today. So a pencil and two blank pieces of paper if you wanna pause the video and go grab those things real quick. The first thing I wanna start by doing is we're gonna have a little self-challenge, okay? And you're gonna get points for this self-challenge. So with your pencil and one of your pieces of paper, I would like for you to think about the rules that you have at school and the rules that you have maybe in your own home. Our teachers and parents give us rules for good reasons to keep us safe and we have to follow those rules so that we can be, we can have good days in our homes and in our, in our school. And God also gives us rules for really good reasons. So I would like Right now, I would like for you to write down as many rules as you can think of that your teacher gives you at school and that your parents give you at home. Okay, so pause the video. Take a, a couple of minutes. Think of these on your own and write down the rules. And you're going to get points for the rules that match up with the ones that I have written down as well. Okay, so now that you've written your rules down, I want you to give yourself a point for every one that matches up with one that I'm about to read out. And they don't have to be exactly the way I've written it, but some similarity, okay? So write down, give yourself a point if you wrote that in school, one of your rules is to treat everyone with respect. Give yourself a tally mark for that. Give yourself another point if you have keep your hands to yourself. Give yourself another point if you wrote down come to class prepared and ready to learn. So every day you have all of the materials you need to be successful in school. Give yourself another point if there's a rule to turn your work in completed and on time. All right, and at home, give yourself a point if you have the rule to keep your room clean. Keep your room clean. Give yourself a point if one of your rules is to get along with your siblings and share. Give yourself another point if one of your rules is to treat your parents with respect. Don't talk back. Don't be sassy to them. And another rule would be to get your chores done. Maybe some of you have things you have to do, like unload the dishwasher or feed the dog or sweep or vacuum or take the trash out, anything like that. One of your rules might be to get the chores done, your weekly chores. And then, you know what? This year, we probably have some extra rules that we haven't really been used to in the past, but maybe one of your rules at school is to wear your mask properly which needs to be over your nose, right? Wear your mask at all times and wear it properly. And stay six feet apart from your classmates. That's a really hard one because we like to be close together and hug and give high fives and hang out. 
That's a hard one. Okay, so now I want you to look back at how many points you have and raise your hand if you got five points, at least five points. Awesome job to the people who got five points. Did anybody get 10 points? All right, 10 pointers, well done. And I don't think I read that many rules, but but I'm sure that some of you might have had some rules on there that I did not have. So give yourself a point for every other rule that you wrote down that I didn't think of. And give yourself a pat on the back for all those rules. Now, our lesson today sort of talks about rules for living in faith, Christian rules. And we have those too. God gives us rules for good reasons, and it's important that we know them and that we follow them. All right. We've been learning about the church, namely, what is the church? And our big picture question throughout the last four weeks is, what is the church? What is the church? And I wonder if you guys who have been tuning in to Sunday School remember what the answer is to that. But it's okay if you don't. The answer to our big picture question is, the church is all believers everywhere who gather in their communities to worship and serve God. All believers everywhere who gather in their communities to worship and serve God. And... We know that there are many ways to worship God and many ways to serve Him. And when we obey His commands, His rules, we can show with our actions that we believe in Jesus and that His love fills us up. Many of Jesus' commands have to do with taking care of other people and loving them well. Sort of like some of our rules at school. Treat each other with respect. Be kind to your friends. Be kind to all classmates. Well, today's Bible story takes place during a time where Jesus had already come to earth. He had already died on the cross for our sins. And he had, rose, he had risen again, showing his victory over sin and death for us. And at this point, Jesus had sent out his apostles. And he wanted them to, to go around the communities and, and travel around and share the good news to churches that had been started everywhere. And so one of our main characters today is James. And James wrote letters to help churches know how to honor God. And so the story for today is called Doers of the Word. Doers of the Word. And the word, of course, you, you might hear that sometimes in Sunday school or in church. When you hear that term, that means the Bible. This God's words telling us how to act, how to behave, how to be good Christians. All right, so if you have your Bible handy, we're going to read the story from James 1 through 2. So if you have your Bible handy and you can turn to that, that would be great. If not, you can listen to, my, to me, read the story, and then we're going to watch the Bible story video. James 1 through 2, Doers of the Word. James was a leader in the Jerusalem church. He wrote a letter to the Jewish believers who had moved to many different places. He told them the way the believers should live. James explained that talking about God in the church is not enough. We have to do what God says, James wrote. Be doers of the word. If you hear the word but don't do it, you fool yourself. Anyone who is a hearer but not a doer is like someone who looks at himself in the mirror goes away and forgets right away what he looks like. God's word shows us the truth about ourselves. Anyone who hears and does the word will be blessed. James explained that people who really love God will show care to other people too. God is honored when believers show their faith with actions. One way to do this is by helping orphans and widows, people who, are, who have no one to take care of them. We show love in what we say and what we do. James also wrote, What good is it if someone says he has faith, but he does not do what is good and right? 
If someone is cold and hungry and you say to him, go in peace and stay warm and be well fed, but you don't give him clothes or food, then what good is it? James said that in the same way, faith works. Faith without works is useless. Anyone can say that he has faith, but true faith is proven by good works. James reminded the believers that Abraham showed his faith when he obeyed God and got ready to sacrifice his son Isaac. Rahab showed her faith by risking her life to hide the spies in Jericho. God does not accept people because they do what is good and right. He accepts people who have true faith in Jesus. We can see that true faith when someone does what is good and right. Faith comes first, and then doing what is good and right comes next. So right now, we're going to watch the video of this story. James was a leader in the Jerusalem church. He wrote a letter to the Jewish believers who had moved to many different places. He told them the way believers should live. James explained that talking about God and church is not enough. We have to do what God says, James wrote. Be doers of the word. If you hear the word but don't do it, you fool yourselves. Anyone who is a hearer but not a doer is like someone who looks at himself in a mirror, goes away, and forgets right away what he looked like. God's word shows us the truth about ourselves. Anyone who hears and does the word will be blessed. James explained that people who really love God will show care to people too. God is honored when believers show their faith with actions. One way to do this is by helping orphans and widows, people who have no one to take care of them. We show love in what we say and do, James also wrote. What good is it if someone says he has faith but does not do what is good and right? If someone is cold and hungry and you say to him, go in peace, stay warm and be well fed, but you don't give him clothes or food, what good is it? James said that in the same way. Faith without works is useless. Anyone can say that he has faith, but true faith is proven by good works. James reminded the believers that Abraham showed his faith when he obeyed God and got ready to sacrifice his son Isaac. Rahab showed her faith by risking her life to hide the spies in Jericho. God does not accept people because they do what is good and right. He accepts people who have true faith in Jesus. We can see that true faith when someone does what is good and right. Faith comes first, and then doing what is good and right comes next. Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. James reminded believers to be doers of the word. Jesus rescues us from sin and frees us to live a life that honors God. By doing what is good and right, people who trust Jesus can show that they really believe in him. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Lincoln from Austin, Texas asks, Why does God want us to do good things? Great question, Lincoln. You know, in today's Bible story, we saw that James, who was the half-brother of Jesus, said that faith without works is useless. You know, some translations say that faith without works is dead. That's really important we understand. What did he have in mind? What does it mean that faith without works is dead? Well, here's what I think James has in mind. Obedience, or works, is our response to God's love for us. It's what we should do naturally when we have faith, when we understand who God is, what he's done to us, we should live differently. And these good works that God does through us is how we make him known to other people. It's how we worship him. That's why it's so important. It proves that God is real to us and helps other people see that God is real as well. Let me give you an illustration that might help. Suppose I told you that I love chocolate. 
I can't live without chocolate. Chocolate is the most important thing in my life. And I told you this all the time, but you never ever saw me eat chocolate even one time. Would that make sense? Would you start to question if I really love chocolate at some point? I I think you probably would and you probably should. Well, here's the thing. If we're always telling people that we love God, that God is the most important thing in our lives, that we can't live without God, but they don't see us living any differently, then you can understand why they would start to scratch their head and say, really? Does God really matter to you? And so that's why our works, our obedience really matters. You see, God's desire is not just that we believe to be saved from punishment. God's desire is that we believe so that we're changed to live the way he's always intended for us to live. And in doing so, our faith should make a difference before others. They should see that we love God. They should see that God matters. And they should be drawn to want to love God too and know God as well. So here's a question back for you. How can you put your faith into action this week? You know, I love how simply James explains the importance of knowing God and obeying Him. If you were hungry and someone told you that they hoped you were full but didn't bring you dinner or give you food, then does that help? No, they need to actually feed you to make you full. The same goes for saying, stay warm. That's a nice thing to say, but if you don't give someone a coat or a blanket or something to help them stay warm, then what good is it? So when you say one thing, but your actions don't match up, it tells other people that you didn't really mean what you said. We can't truly help others or please God by just knowing what God says to do. We must actually do it. We must obey. And God shows the world that we are really God's people and Jesus really is our king. More than that, obedience is one way we show that we love God for all he has done for us. So when we obey our teachers and the rules at school and we obey our parents at home, We're showing them that we respect them and we love them. The church must love God and people. Remember, what is the church? The church is all believers everywhere who gather in their communities to worship and serve God. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die for us. And we love him in return by trusting that what he asks us to do is right and good. And then doing it. The key passage for this week is from Romans 12, 5. In Christ, we, though many, from one body and each member belongs to all the others. Romans 12, 5. In Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. That is an interesting verse, but it means that all Christians together create the body of Christ. So our last activity for today, before we pray and say goodbye, I want you to take your other blank piece of paper and make a paper airplane. Okay, so you've got your paper, and you can do this however you like. You know, everybody probably has their own special way to make a paper airplane. Mine's probably pretty simple. I just folded the front together into a triangle. And then I fold it in half. Now, the final part I want you, last thing I want you to do, so you've got your paper airplane, I want you to write two words, one on this wing and one on the other one. I want you to write the word faith on one wing, F 
A I T H. Faith. And on the other wing, I want you to write works. W O R K S. Faith works. Now, if you need to pause the video to finish your airplane, that's fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test drive these planes real quick. So come with me and let me see how, how well my, my plane does. Right. Okay, here we go. I go into the hallway of my home and I am going to fly my plane. Ready? Faith works. Here we go. Oh, well, I'm not very good at this. But everybody, I want you guys to do your own paper airplane. Here we go. Okay. Now, once you've tested out your plane, I want you to go back and I want you to cut off one of the wings. Either one. It doesn't work. doesn't matter. Cut off one of the wings. So, I'm going to cut off my wing that says faith. Now, my airplane only has one wing. Okay? So, when we're finished with our video, I want you to go test this out. And I bet everybody has an idea of how that's going to go. And I believe that these airplanes probably are going to fly a lot farther with both wings because airplanes need both wings to fly just like Christians need both faith and works to please God. You cannot fly an airplane with just one wing and you cannot have true faith without also obeying God and having good works. So, will you all please bow your heads and pray with me. God, thank you that you love us so much that you sent Jesus to die for us. Since we know that you did that for us, we know that you want good for us and that all your commands are for our good. Help us to show our love for you by obeying you, showing that all our faith is real by the works that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Everyone have a great week. I'll see you again soon.